Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, we learned about HTTP POST method. Today, we are going to learn about HTTP PUT method. The general use cases for PUT method are updating your password, updating profile picture, updating profile details, updating a contact, updating an image, etc. So whenever we talk about update functionality or a feature, know that we are, we are using HTTP PUT method. We will learn how to use it. We will learn how to use PUT method with headers, params. We'll see how to subscribe the data and how to catch error in this particular episode. This is part 76 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. Make sure you check out. I have planned more than 100 tutorials for you in this series. The tutorials and the episodes include detailed explanation along with use cases. Make sure you check out the complete playlist. It's covered from scratch, from ground up to the most advanced use cases. If you want to learn and master Angular, this is the series that you should follow end to end. Right now, I've covered so many topics. Today we are in the 76th episode where we are learning about HTTP put method. Also, if you have any doubts or queries, during the course of this, any of these uh, tutorials that I've shared, please reach out to me in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you. A quick note on HTTP client for our viewers who are joining us new. HTTP client is used for performing the HTTP request and responses. HTTP client service is available in the package angular slash common slash HTTP. To use HTTP client, we need to work and include HTTP client module in our app module. HTTP client also provides us with different functionality, useful, very useful functionalities like params, headers, interceptors, response type, etc. We will explore some of these in today's episode and I will be dedicating a complete episode for HTTP interceptor soon. That being said, let's get started with the put method. So like I said, to make a, any update call, we will be using the HTTP put method. Let's get started with hands on lab. All right, so so far, um, just a quick recap. We have learned about services. Then we have seen HTTP client and HTTP client module, how to import HTTP client. Also, last three episodes, we started with HTTP methods we saw HTTP GET and HTTP POST. So if it would make sense if you can watch all these previous episodes in the playlist so that it, you have continuity in your learning. Today we will work with HTTP PUT method. So HTTP PUT method takes two things which are mandatory. So the first thing is the URL that you want to pass. The second is the body object. And the third is the actual ID that you want to update. So for example, if you want to update an ID uh, where user ID is 10, right? You want to change the data where user ID is 10, let's say. So you would have to pass the URL, the endpoint. You'll have to pass the new body that will be used for updating and the ID through which it will know what is the parameter or the unique ID of that particular resource that you're trying to update. Let's get into hands-on and see this in detail. Before we do that, let me show you the fake API that we will be using for our purpose. So in the last episodes, I introduced you to JSON placeholder. This is a free fake API test uh, APIs for testing, developing and prototyping. Today we are looking at the put method. All right, so the put method is this. So if you see here, it will take a resource URL followed by the ID. So this is the user ID that you are trying to update. In this case, it is the post ID, the body that you want to update. All right. So we'll use the same for the user and we'll go ahead and update it. So we will go to our service, which is user service, create a new method and let's call it update user. And we will use the HTTP instance that we had created in the previous episodes, which of HTTP client this dot HTTP dot put. Now we are working with put method. So if you see here, it says the URL of the 
endpoint so here it is the URL which should be user slash and along with that it would take compulsory which is the body right so we'll create the body let's call it say uh, put body as a one of the uh, variable and here we'll add the data that we want to update and we will copy this and we will provide the data in just a bit so what is the data it's going to take right so I'm going to take a users example slash user user slash one all right so this is the example it's going to take and what I'm going to do here is instead of post we will take the ID of the user and update it so this is usually a two-step process first you will get the data and then you will update it right so we will do that later first I'm going to simply update the users details so I'm going to say that wherever the user ID is one update the name as uh, tutorials right simple nothing complex here usually you would get this from the form I have shown that in the previous episode where we did with add customer form and we collected the data and we worked with it imagine that you are collecting the same data with update creating this object and then sending it to the put method so let's try and use this in our component so we will go to our component we will say customers component and here let's just create a new I'm going to create a new CRM and here I'm going to create and go to customer source app customers module and here I'm going to generate a new component I'm going to call it edit customers so this will be the component I will use for editing so I got the edit customers go to customer component and what I'm going to do I'm going to import the user service from services slash user service and in the constructor we will initialize this object we'll initialize the service and create an instance of it all right now I'm saying ng on init this dot user service dot update user right so what I'm doing I'm just calling this method right now I'm not subscribing anything because I'm not returning anything all I want to do is right here I want to print what is happening and then we will move this logic into that component all right so we should get the updated data let's see this now so I got the update users I have some body and I'm saying update where user ID is equal to one and here I'm saying user ID one and update the name as our tutorials when this call is made with this body with this data I'm subscribing to the data and just console logging it let's see that and before we do that we might also want to add a new route to the component module and I'm just going to say update and here I'm going to say edit component okay now it's done let's go and instead of add now we will say edit and there seems to be some error let's just check it out in a moment it's not edit customer it's going to be edit customers edit customers component alrighty so let's go here and say customers slash edit oh sorry it's update so customers slash update okay so now edit customers work so it would have made a call to the backend API let's see refresh the screen and we should see a call made it did not make the call yet uh, so let's see why on ng on in it it should ideally be making that call ng on in it call this service and update it this dot put let's throw an error also just in case we will know what is happening and here we will console log the error all right let's see what's happening now 
so once you are on the edit customers we still don't see it okay so let's do one thing let's move that logic back into a click of a button or something so here I'm giving a button and I'm saying update user update user and I'll define this method now in the component and I'm going to say update method and update this method here and instead of all this logic here in the service I'm moving it out and I'm just saying return that means it will return this observable when this API is called of this method which is update user alright so far so good now let's go to component class and subscribe here which is nothing but dot subscribe data console dot log and that's it so now let's see so we got the update user I'm going to clear the cache and console so now I click on update now it made a call but you see it says 404 that means it means that it file did not found it right it not it did not find that file so maybe our URL will need to check once and user slash one or is it user slash one let's verify once so it is users slash one right so user slash one let's check what is the URL it's user that's why okay so make sure that our URL is correct and working fine now we have it here again clear now I click on update now it says 204 200 that means the put request was successful and let's see the data that was sent was this in the preview we get the ID and the user ID correct right so this is how you send data using put it's most similarly like post but the only thing is here you'll use put for updating right in the post you will not have this ID because you don't know that which ID you are updating you're not updating you're creating a resource input you are updating that's why it is slash one which is the ID of that user right so that is with simple post now similarly if you want to use with headers you can use put headers equal to new HTTP headers and then again you can have it like this or you can just simply shortcut define it in one go content type application slash JSON and I'm going to say authentication token user ID whatever you want to send whatever data you want to send as right so this is the header that you want to send along with this request so comma in the options pass headers colon put the headers now this headers will be sent along with this request click on it and you would see that it has sent if you see the request headers you see authentication token you would see content type that we defined you would also see the user ID that we are sending so our headers are set for the put method now next if you want to send params so you can say put params equal to new tp params dot set remember that this is immutable which means that you cannot change them directly you can append them you can set them so this params I'm going to copy here I will use params and pass the put params right so see now I'm passing headers now I'm passing params all right save it and we should see update users so now in the you can see that question mark we are sending the params right and you're also seeing user ID authentication token etc usually if you want to use you would use something called source like from where it is coming so you can say Google Analytics etc so this is how you capture the UTM uh, sources also click on update and now you would see that you can capture the source equal to Google Analytics etc 
So that was about the put method with headers and params. You want to typecast, you can do that. By default, it is observable object. That's the by default one. But if you want to use certain user, we can use that. We defined a interface here in user earlier. So I'm using the same, copy this, go to your put method, put the same, and now you should be good. So that will be used when you're trying to do a strict typecasting. So those are all the combinations with put, which is using a simple put with URL and body. You can use put with headers. You can use with params, right? You can have the type casted that you want. Also, if you open the edit customers and you want to capture the error, I have done it here like this. If you are using subscribe and error, right? So this is one of the fastest and simplest way to get started. I hope it's clear. Do code with me. Do follow the examples that I've done and it will be much clearer to you step by step. Also, once we reach HTTP interceptors and when we do RxJS that is using pipe, map, filter, I'll show you more advanced technique. But for now, stick with this, understand this, do what I've, how I've shown, you should be able to implement the put method end to end. These are some of the use cases we just saw with simple put call, uh, method with a headers, params, typecasting, subscribing and catch error. Alrighty, so in the next uh, episode, I will show you how to do HTTP delete in Angular. If you like my work, if you like my tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arctutorials. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. See you in the next one.